Hello all. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. We are now well into the third week of our course on nonlinear adaptive control. And uh, we are already um, well underway into learning the concepts that will help us analyze uh, autonomous algorithms uh, that drive systems such as what we see in our background. So without uh, delay any further, let me sort of recap for us uh, what we were looking at until last time. Right? So uh, last time we sort of uh, tried to complete this example on of a system, which is a classical example by Masera, which is solved in the book by Vidya Sagar. Uh, and for this particular system, we um, show that uh, it is stable, but it is not uniformly stable. All right. So this is a rather, rather interesting sort of system. Okay, the rather interesting sort of system. And uh, we did a little bit of interest, uh, a nice bit of work and analysis in order to try to see what kind of um, choice of delta uh, must one make um, in order to remove the dependence on the initial time, right? And what we concluded, right? This is sort of the highlight of last time. Uh, what we concluded was that uh, we require uh, we are required to choose the smallest possible delta out of all the deltas that we get for different initial times. Yeah, and that's what we need to do uh, in order to make uh, delta independent of zero and obtain uniform stability, all right? Uh, we also sort of uh, looked at uh, this, uh, so very, very brief, we looked at what is this Van der Poel oscillator. So what we want to do is, of course, complete uh, discussing this, uh, Van der Poel oscillator system in a little bit more detail today, okay, before we go ahead. So what is this Van der Poel oscillator? We already uh, said last time that this is a very, very, uh, you know, sort of classical nonlinear oscillator system. It's also immensely popular uh, because uh, we want, uh, because uh, there are certain scenarios in which you want to construct systems which have an oscillatory model, for example, pacemakers uh, that are uh, used in parts um, of individuals who have sort of um, arrhythmia and, and other inherent issues. All right. So, um, what we want to do here is to look at whether it's stable or uniformly stable or unstable. Yeah. Um, so, this is what we want to do. And the Van der Poel oscillator system is given by this equation 1.6. And here we have the handle of choosing this particular mu. We can choose this constant mu and sort of uh, defines or changes the behavior of the Van der Poel oscillator. All right. So uh, the first thing we, of course, do is write this uh, 1.6 in the standard state space form. And for this, we, of course, choose states X and Y as always. And so this equation 1.7 is what we will analyze. The first thing to observe is that 0, 0 is an isolated equilibrium, right? So this is an uh, isolated equilibrium point for this system, okay? Um, once we do that, if you remember what I had suggested was that we just make phase plane plots, all right? We are not going to really try to solve this because it is rather difficult to write a closed form solution for this system. Okay, so what we do is we simply um, make a face plane portrait of the system. And this is what is shown in one and two, figures one and two. So uh, although it says for every mu, here it is plotted for particular value of mu, the face plane portrait. And 
the it it so happens that for any initial condition uh, your system actually converges to this sort of a limit cycle you know this thing that you see here well, this is the oscillatory behavior of the system if you may okay for any oscillator the behavior is always such that it follows some sort of a periodic limit cycle at the end okay there is a periodic limit set and this is called limit cycle okay so so we already know um well we don't we've not already defined it yet but anyway so this is called a limit cycle behavior because it is a cyclical behavior in the phase plane right so this is what happens wherever you start it doesn't matter where you start you will always end up into this following this sort of a limit cycle yeah, and this is true for most values of mu okay it's true for most values of mu so so now if i want to talk about stability of the origin what do i require i require that given any epsilon positive i must be able to find a delta such that if initial conditions are within delta then my solution lies within an epsilon ball of the equilibrium right now if you now we stated very carefully here we say that if you choose an epsilon which is smaller than the sort of the radius of the limit cycle okay and this is given by an exam example here right so the limit cycle is this a set a which looks something like this and if we choose an epsilon ball which is this guy right you can see that every solution is eventually converging to this cycle a therefore it doesn't matter how small a delta i make out here my solution is definitely going to get out of this epsilon ball and converge to this set a and because of this you know sort of unusual behavior the equilibrium zero zero is in fact unstable okay because i can choose any epsilon ball smaller than this right it has to lie inside the limit cycle of course so if i choose any epsilon which lies inside the limit cycle there is no possibility of finding a delta because for every initial condition inside this ball you will always go to the set a all right and this is a problem okay in terms of i mean it is a problem not in general but it is a problem in terms of uh, how we have defined stability okay how we have defined stability right so for stability we require that if the user gives me any epsilon right it can be anything arbitrarily large arbitrarily small it doesn't matter for every possible epsilon that the user gives me i must be able to um you know give or, or provide a delta such that initial conditions inside the delta ball will remain inside the epsilon ball. Now, in this case, this is absolutely not possible, as you can see, yeah, because anything inside this ball will always go to A. Okay, and we know that delta cannot be larger than epsilon, right? That's obvious. Excellent, right? So, equilibrium zero, zero is in fact unstable. However, this is a very nice system, right? I mean, this is a very nice and well-behaved system in the sense that all trajectories seem to uh, you know, go to the limit cycle. In fact, trajectories for certain values of mu, trajectories outside also go to the limit cycle. Okay, for certain values of mu, the trajectories outside the limit cycle also converge to the limit cycle. And for all values of mu, trajectories in starting inside the limit cycle will converge to the limit cycle okay so this is a rather nicely behaved system but it is not stable in the sense of Lyapunov. okay so remember that although we have uh, painstakingly defined these notions of you know stability in the sense of Lyapunov and all but it is not you know the final holy grail i mean there are systems which behave nicely which do not exhibit stability in the sense of the upper. okay this is rather nice yeah of course this this might also lead us to uh thinking about more uh, general definitions of stability right this might uh, but then of course we don't look at that in this course yeah but yes it does make sense to think about more general definitions of stability etc okay great great so now that we 
and sort of have a decent handle on what is stability and uniform stability we want to look at more uh, additional properties that the dynamical system might possess yeah and and uh, we've already sort of um, seen in this bar blood slam analysis that uh, we are very interested in convergence and right? we always want things to converge to zero functions to converge to zero right so this is the property that we are rather uh, keenly interested in right? so um, now this convergence property is um, formulated in systems theoretical language as attractivity okay so this is the notion of convergence for dynamical systems right so suppose uh, you know in order to talk about attractivity what i do is i assume that my equilibrium is in fact at the origin right it's not such a you know difficult assumption to satisfy if this does not happen i simply do a change of coordinates such as this and once i do this change of coordinates yeah it should be it will become evident to you that this equilibrium in this y coordinates is in fact the origin okay this is just to make our notation easy yeah that's uh, and it's very standard practice yeah so it's not uh, something crazy it's just very very standard it's not even a big deal all right we always consider origin to be our equilibrium yeah all right so what is what does it mean for a uh, for the origin to be attractive it means that for all initial times there exists a delta depending on this initial time only the initial time such that initial conditions within the delta ball result in all state trajectories converging to zero as t goes to infinity okay so this is essentially convergence essentially convergence the way we know the only thing we have done is we have fixed some initial time and initial states yeah so for attractivity i require to, i'm required to find a you know initial condition ball of size delta this delta is of course allowed to depend on t0 yeah unlike the stability case here there is no epsilon so there's no epsilon dependence right but t0 is of course there so it can depend on t0 right and we require that if the initial conditions are within this delta ball that we have sort of provided then all my solutions my solutions the state trajectories in fact converge to zero as t goes to infinity as usual we also have the notion of uniform attractivity okay so what is uniform attractivity it is that for all t0 there exists a delta now this delta doesn't depend on t0 either therefore yeah i mean so let me be a little bit more precise so here delta positive similarly delta positive this is important okay let's not miss this so we need the delta to be of course a positive quantity now here the delta cannot depend on t0 either so it's just a constant right so for uniform attractivity we need to be able to find a positive constant delta such that initial conditions within the delta ball guarantee that your state trajectories converge to the origin as t goes to infinity okay so as before as in the case of the definition of stability versus uniform stability here too the uniformity is with respect to the initial time okay that is what we mean by uniformity in a system theoretic setting all right so i hope that's clear excellent so now that we have these two new notions why don't we uh, test these for the example by masera that we have already seen okay so if you look at uh, what i'm going to do is for the masera system i'm going to write this solution out again okay so i will uh, write out this solution again uh, so let's see if i can in fact do that i can if i can copy it right so it does let me copy it so i don't i hope it lets me paste it too
Right. So here you go. So, so this, so this was, I guess, you know, this was our example, right? I mean, this was, uh, yeah, this was the example for Messera example. Yeah, so this is what is our, was our solution. And what do we want to do? We want to sort of understand whether this is attractive and slash or uniformly attractive. Okay, so let's see. Is this an attractive system? So in this case, I just need to find a delta. Okay, so I just need to find a delta. Right, so find delta or convergence. Right? So that's all I need to do. I need to find a delta for convergence. Now the question is, what sort of initial conditions are allowed? So let's note something, okay? Let's notice something. So once I fix this T0, right? So in fact, it doesn't matter whether I fix T0 or not, but, but let's notice something. This is, uh, this is some value here, right? Some, you know, constant, right? Similarly, gamma is also some constant. Yeah. After T0, X0 fixed. Okay. For a particular choice of T0 and an X0, it doesn't matter what these choices are, in fact. But once I've chosen this T0 and X0, these two are, in fact, constant quantities. All right, they're not changing with t. Right? Notice they're not functions of t. So there's no t dependence in either of these. T appears only here. And what do I know about this term? I know that this is going to be exponentially decaying. This is going to be exponentially decaying. Okay. So this guy, once t0 and x0 are fixed for a particular t0 and x0, these two are fixed quantities. This guy is definitely exponentially decaying. So as t goes to infinity, this is going to zero. And then rather fast. It's an exponential decay, right? And therefore, it doesn't matter what these quantities are. And the important thing is they don't change with t. And because they don't change with t, this entire thing is going to go to zero as t goes to infinity. Therefore, I hope you believe me when I say that delta is infinity. So what I can say is for all x0 in Rn, I have limit as t goes to infinity, norm xt is in fact 0. Okay. All right. So in fact, it is not just, well, it is definitely uniformly attractive. Right? That's for sure. It's uniformly, but it's also globally attractive. Okay. It's not just uniformly, but also globally attractive. And this is what, right. So this is anyway from the previous example. This is what is our next definition globally uniformly attractive that is for all t0 and x0 limit as t goes to infinity norm xt is zero but this is in fact our next was our next definition okay this was in fact our next definition so this is a rather strong property rather strong property that this mesera system that we were considering was globally uniformly attractive or uniformly globally attractive, however you want to say it. Okay. So it was not just this, but something more because there is the delta can be pushed to infinity. So it's a rather powerful property. Yeah. Excellent. 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 So this picture, I mean, I know we didn't sort of discuss this, but this is a um, illustration of what happens when for the Van der Poel oscillator? So I'll just spend a minute on it before going further. Yeah. 
for the Vanderpol oscillator, we had this phase plane for a particular mu, right? But for all mu's, this is the only difference that happens is as you change mu, this limit cycle sort of seems to change in shape a little bit. Yeah. Otherwise, all trajectories uh, starting at origin still converge to the limit cycles. Okay. So the only thing that changes is the shape of this limit cycle. Okay. So the origin continues to remain unstable as we stated before for the Van der Poel oscillator. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So this is. Yeah. So as it's mentioned here, the limit cycle begins as a circle and with varying mu becomes increasingly sharp at the corner. So here and here you see it becomes sharp. Okay. As you increase the mu. So the nature of the limit cycle changes. So depending on your application, you may choose a particular mu. But the fact that the origin is unstable continues to be uh, as is. Okay. Excellent. All right. So we've already seen stability, uniform stability. And now we have seen three attractivity properties. And there was no notion of uh, notice that I want to say this note. No such thing as global stability. Yeah, as far as the stability definitions go, there is no such thing as global stability. We saw stability, we saw uniform stability. So two different definitions. Yeah, because we are always requiring us, we always re are required to choose an epsilon and correspondingly get a delta. Okay. So, uh, and delta cannot be greater than epsilon. We already know that. So therefore, it, it's not possible to say that delta can be arbitrary. Delta cannot be arbitrary. Delta definitely has to be less than or equal to epsilon. Okay. So delta spanning all of Rn is not allowed. Right. Therefore, there is no such notion as global stability. It doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. However, in case of attractivity, we saw three different definitions. We saw attractivity, we saw uniform attractivity, and we also have global uniform attractivity. Okay, and that is what is this definition. Okay, that is uh, doesn't matter what your initial condition and initial time are, your trajectories do converge to zero as t goes to infinity. And we in fact saw that the mass error system that we have is globally uniformly attractive. Okay, so now we'll continue to look at this mass error example and talk about each. Now the rest of the definitions are rather straightforward. Okay, the rest of the definitions are rather straightforward and incrementally strong. Yeah. So let's look at asymptotic stability. What is asymptotic stability? It is simply combining stability and attractivity. Okay. So, so we already know that, for example, about the Mathera system that is stable, we already know that it is attractive. Therefore, Mathera system is asymptotically. stable okay so the Masera system is in fact asymptotically stable okay let's go to the next one the next one is uniform asymptotic stability so we have added the qualifier uniform here. so therefore the qualifier uniform also goes into both of these definitions okay that is it is uniform stable and uniformly attractive. Now the question is, is the Masera system uniformly stable and uniform? Is it uniform asymptotically stable? The answer is no. Right? The answer is no. Why? Because it is uniformly attractive. Sure. We just prove that it is uniformly attractive because there is no delta and delta is infinite. Right? But it is not uniformly stable. It is only stable. Therefore, the Masera system So this I will I mean I will start to make these acronyms. 
asymptotic stability, uniform asymptotic stability, exponential stability, not, so the Masera system is not uniformly asymptotic stable, asymptotically stable because it at the origin of course. So whenever I say something is stable, uniformly asymptotically stable, and I don't mention the equilibrium, yeah, I'm just trying to shorten the sentence, okay? Whenever you're talking about any of these notions, you're always talking about a particular equilibrium, okay? So the Masera system is asymptotically stable at the origin. The Masera system is not uniformly asymptotically stable at the origin. So when I write it out formally, I have to write the whole sentence, okay? Please keep this in mind. You have to write out the whole sentence. I am not saying the whole thing occasionally because it's clear from the context that I'm talking about the zero equilibrium. Okay, so the Masera system is not uniformly asymptotically stable because it fails on one count and we need both of these. Okay, let's skip this exponential stability and go to the, because exponential stability is the strongest property in fact, so it should come in the end. So this is the next property is global uniform asymptotic stability, okay? And what does it require? It requires global uniform asymptotic stability. So it requires uh, uniform stability and global uniform attractivity, okay? Now it should be obvious to you that because the Masera system is not uniformly asymptotically stable, it cannot be globally uniformly asymptotically stable either. Okay. However, there is of course a definition somewhere in between, which is not really mentioned here, but I will still put it for a reference. Um, well, let me put it say here. Global asymptotic stability so this is g so this is also this is g a s and what does this require it requires stability because there is no uniformity plus globally attractive okay stability plus globally attractive okay and you will note now that masera system is globally asymptotically stable yeah because it is stable and it also is globally attractive so so, so this is not the best property. So, so whenever we have a system, we are always trying to find the best property that is satisfied out of all of these. Okay. So, asymptotic stability, yes, as there a system is asymptotically stable, but it is something more because uh, the system converges from any initial condition to the origin. That is something stronger than just asymptotic stability, which is a local notion. Okay. Therefore, this notion of global asymptotic stability also exists which is that this Masera system also satisfies this, that is that the origin is stable and also globally attractive, right? So the Masera system is in fact a globally asymptotically stable system. All right, I hope that is clear. Excellent, excellent. So, so we've done some interesting things today. I will sort of try to summarize what we have done today. Um, so, we of course uh, started off with uh, talking about the Van der Poel oscillator. We saw its face plane portrait to uh, sort of judge uh, whether it's uh, stable, uniformly stable or unstable. What we found was that for different values of mu, the limit cycle shape changes, but overall the stability uh, question has the same answer that is the origin is always unstable it's neither stable nor uniformly stable okay then we went on to talk about additional uh, definitions uh, beyond stability and these are related to convergence and so this is 
these properties are called attractivity properties. Okay, so we we talked about attractivity, we talked about uniform attractivity, global uniform attractivity, global attractivity. Then we talked about asymptotic stability, global asymptotic stability, uniform asymptotic stability, and global uniform asymptotic stability. Right? So we will sort of do this again a little bit next time. But what we were able to conclude for this Masera system, this example that we've been talking about a whole lot, is that it is the best property that is satisfies is that it is globally asymptotically stable. That is, it is stable and it is globally attractive together. All right. So that's it, folks. So we will meet again next time. So thank you.